Welcome to the Healthy Skin Show with Jennifer Fugo, where we're flipping everything you've been told about your chronic skin issues upside down and connecting you with alternative solutions your dermatologist never told you about. Welcome back to episode 257 of the Healthy Skin Show. In today's episode, I want to debunk a pervasive myth in the skin rash community, namely that itchiness means you must have high histamine levels or even a histamine intolerance. Itchiness, especially when it gets worse at night, can be highly detrimental to your quality of life. No one is going to argue that because, I mean... You guys, if you know, you know. It can also determine how much mechanical damage via scratching can get done to your skin, potentially resulting in scrapes, scratches, cuts, and even wounds that can then be open to infection. Often, clients and participants of my Skin Rash Rebuild program think that because they're itchy, they must have a histamine problem. But after working with so many clients all over the world, I can tell you that being itchy does not mean you're histamine intolerant. It also means that antihistamine medications and even supplements to help address histamine issues won't necessarily help. For many, this comes as a real surprise, but it also makes sense for people who have never found much relief from prescribed antihistamines. This is because itchiness can be caused by so many different factors that have nothing to do with allergies or histamine. So let's talk about why this is and what else could be going on. If you've thought all of this time that being itchy should be helped or even solved by taking an antihistamine medication, you're not alone. Itchiness, especially when you're dealing with chronic skin problems like eczema, psoriasis, dandruff, and rosacea, is often treated with over-the-counter or even prescription antihistamine medications. The list includes meds such as Singular, which is also known as the generic Monolucast, Zyrtec, Benadryl, Claritin, Allegra, and a whole slew of other options. And then there are other medications commonly used in addition to these when itchiness isn't well controlled. One option that I commonly see in my practice is famotidine. This is also known as Pepsid. This medication is typically prescribed or used over the counter to help with GERD or heartburn, but it is also considered an antihistamine as well because it's an H2 blocker. One very common complaint that I repeatedly hear from private clients is that they generally feel that antihistamines don't really help them all that much. And this could mean, you know, taking an antihistamine more than once a day or potentially taking even more than one medication within the course of a day. And there are times when even more natural options like quercetin, for example, and other supplements that may be like herb combos meant for histamine support aren't really that helpful either. So if itchiness were solely triggered by histamine, then the medications and even potentially the supplements meant to address histamine would help. But what does it mean when they don't? And this is the question that got me thinking deeper about the assumption that itch is solely a sign of a histamine problem. As I reviewed more and more cases, I came to see that while it's certainly important to consider itch and how intense it is, it can't be used at all as a sign of histamine overload. So what drives itch then, if not histamine? This is a complicated question that has answers that may not have been explored by your doctor. And my opinion on this topic was reinforced by a presentation I saw during the Eczema Expo 2022 from Dr. Sean Quatra, where he not only pointed out what I just shared with you, but also went deeper into the various science on itching. And he explicitly noted in his presentation that the non-histamine pathways for itching were actually a bigger problem. I won't do a deep dive into his presentation right now because Dr. Quatra will be coming on the show to talk more in depth in the coming months with you guys all about this. But here are a few highlights. First, pain 
and itch stimuli experienced in the body are extremely similar. He also shared that itchiness is associated with a higher level of interleukon-31, also known as IL-31. This is a cytokine in your body, especially found in those with eczema, urticaria, or chronic hives, and prurigo nodularis. And he mentioned in his presentation that the signal of itch could actually be transmitted from the gut via your vagus nerve as a result of certain microbes living there. In addition to these points from the presentation, my clinical experience has demonstrated that itchiness can be a sign of other underlying issues, and I wanna list those out for you. So first comes vitamin deficiencies. We're looking for things such as vitamin A, B12, and vitamin D. Mineral deficiencies can also cause a problem. Most notable would be low zinc, though low iron can also trigger itchiness. Then we'd be looking for other things like H. pylori infections, fungal overgrowth, parasitic infections, bacterial dysbiosis in the large intestine, small intestine bacterial overgrowth, and mold exposure. Now these issues will trigger itchiness that doesn't necessarily respond to antihistamines very well, if at all. And itchiness can be a sign of a skin infection. So you can see why the idea that itchiness inherently means that you have a histamine intolerance is a myth. There are many different reasons that could be going on that should be ruled out, especially if the antihistamine approach, which includes meds, supplements, and even a low histamine diet, isn't bringing you relief. And it also means that more may not be better. If your doctor or practitioner isn't open to looking any further, then it's time to start digging deeper. And one really helpful tool to use is my free skin rash root cause finder guide that can help you pinpoint some of these hidden root causes. I've talked a lot about itchiness and how it might not be a sign of histamine issues, but I wanna clarify one really important thing. If you're struggling with chronic urticaria, also known as hives or dermatographia, you will experience itchiness as a sign of excess histamine. This is because these specific issues are inherently a part of a concept that I talk a lot about called histamine overload. The itchiness experienced from hives, welts, wheels, and other marks due to pressure, heat exposure, cold exposure, exercise, and other sources is connected to histamine. So if you're listening to this thinking, what I'm saying doesn't make sense given your case because of hives or dermatographia, you are the exception. Your itch is likely driven by histamine, but also there could be additional triggers via those non-histamine pathway avenues that I mentioned earlier. I hope that this episode is eye-opening for you and pushes you to think outside of the box about what itchiness might mean for your case. For too long, assumptions about chronic skin issues and the awful symptoms that accompany them leave people like you suffering or feeling like a more serious medication is your only option for life. Instead of feeling at war with your body and living in a nightmare of hellish symptoms every day, let's start by asking why they're happening. It's okay to use tools like meds or supplements to help you cope with or minimize these symptoms. But if you're serious about making them stop or at least way more manageable, you have to ask what the symptom could be pointing towards so you can address it. If you've got any questions or thoughts to share about this, or you want to see the references that I've put together for you in the show notes, head on over to skinterrupt.com forward slash 257 so we can keep the conversation going. Then share this episode with someone you know who's been struggling with itchiness, can't seem to get it under control, feels like the antihistamines or maybe even the low histamine diet or the supplements just aren't working, and they're wondering why they feel so like kind of broken. They're not broken. 
It's just that it's not a histamine issue. So this could be a huge, huge big deal for them just by you simply sharing this information with them. And before you head off for your day, take a moment to rate and review The Healthy Skin Show on your podcast platform of choice. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can tune in each week for new research, tips, alternative strategies, and the inspiration you need to keep working toward rebuilding healthy skin. And then let's connect over on Instagram. I'm at Jennifer Fugo. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.